Hello everyone, thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to my healthy what I eat in a day. I've been trying to make as many healthy choices in my day to day as I'm on this wellness journey. Not necessarily a diet, I'm not restricting myself to any foods that I want. I'm just trying to make some healthy choices. So I'll be showing you what I eat in a day in the fall and autumn months. I just made this amazing healthy banana muffin recipe. Technically it's Cookie and Kate's healthy banana bread recipe. I basically just put it in for less time in a muffin tin. I love it. It is amazing. All you need is melted coconut oil, honey or maple syrup. I use maple syrup, two eggs, mashed banana. I use a little bit more mashed banana and a little bit less of the honey or maple syrup just to have less of that. And then milk of your choice, baking soda, vanilla extract, salt, ground cinnamon, flour, and then any additions if you want like nuts or or chocolate. Sometimes I actually add protein powder. I didn't have any on hand, but that's a great addition if you want a little bit of extra protein and it's just amazing. also made this amazing coffee latte. Really, it's like mostly milk with a little bit of coffee in it because I'm not like a huge coffee drinker. So I froth the milk in my blender because I don't have a handheld blender. And then I completely forgot to say, I do put it in the microwave for two minutes or before it starts to overflow and puff out. So I usually watch it towards the end to make sure that it doesn't overflow and then add some coffee in it and it turns out so frothy and amazing. I add a little bit of maple syrup in it as the sweetener and some cinnamon on top and it's just amazing. So that was what I ate this morning. And then later today, I'm gonna go for a quick grocery shop to get a few things that I'll need. I'll be making a salad with salmon, which reminds me I should take the salmon out of the fridge. And then my butternut squash recipe that I make in my slow cooker. I make that like at least once every fall. So I'll be making that today. And it's a prep ahead of time. It cooks for like four hours in your slow cooker and it's delicious. That's what the plan is for today and then any snacks along the way and what I drink I will also be sharing. <laughs> Before I go let's do a little muffin taste test. I haven't even had one yet. Oh they're quite hot. Okay I'm gonna wait. <laughs> oh no I brought some. How do you like them? Are good. they good? I love that they're not too sweet or anything even though they're banana bread like banana sweet but they're not too sweet. They're moist. They're delicious. There are only two muffins left. My family devoured them. So obviously they were good. Just got back from the grocery store. I had to pick up a few things for dinner tonight for our slow cooker butternut squash recipe. I'm going to start by prepping lunch because it's lunchtime, but also simultaneously doing prep for the butternut squash soup. I will walk you through both. So the salmon is all thawed. I just left it in some water to just quicken the process a bit. Usually we do do leftovers from the night before for lunch if we have or like a quick salad or something. We actually had some leftover salad from last night so I'm going to be throwing this on some lettuce if we have and since we didn't have any leftover protein last night we had lamb. We ate it all because it was so good. I'm going to just do the salmon real quick using this recipe from Half Baked Harvest. I had seen it and I'd been thinking about making it for so long so I thought I would do it today but I'm going to kind of do a variation so it's a spicy ginger 
ginger sesame crusted salmon bowls is the recipe, but I'm going to just chuck this on the lettuce and then do the sauce for it and call it a day and not use any rice. So let's get to it. I basically followed the recipe exactly with the salmon and the sauce, but I did end up just doing, like I said, adding lettuce. This was fresh lettuce from my grandparents' garden, as well as peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers with some green onion. I also added a little bit of rice vinegar, which the recipe doesn't, and some cilantro, which the recipe has an herb salad, so I just took the cilantro that we had and put that in. I also wish that I had cooked the salmon for 10 minutes, not 15, just if you like a little bit less of a dry salmon. I don't know. I think it dried it out a bit, but otherwise the recipe was really good. I didn't add that spicy mayo that she had in there, but I used the recipe as inspiration and it turned out really great with just the sauce on top of the salmon, on top of the salad. It was delicious. Once I finished my salmon, I got started on the prep for the butternut squash recipe. I love this recipe because you can really chuck in so many different veg or leave out some and it's always delicious. All you really need is a butternut squash and an onion and garlic, but I added sweet potato, carrot, and a green apple for fun. You start by prepping all your ingredients, which I will leave in the description below, but you peel any of the vegetables and fruits that need peeling and then take out the seeds of the butternut squash and roughly chop everything up. You don't really need to be exact with this. It'll all cook down. The one thing I did wish I did was cut the carrot, at least the thicker part, a little bit more than I did because four hours on high just wasn't enough to like fully cook it. I did have to leave it like 10 or 15 minutes longer. It wasn't a big deal in the end. Tasted great, just an FYI. Once you've chopped everything up, you just throw it all in the slow cooker. Mine was a bit packed. Maybe I should have added less carrot or something, but it's all good. It worked out. Once everything's in there, just drizzle everything everything with olive oil and add your broth. Usually I use vegetable broth. Didn't have any on hand this time, so I used chicken broth instead. And usually I use around three to four cups. I did do four cups because I knew that that was a lot of veg. Could have gone for a little more too, but it worked out. It was a nice thick soup. Then I added all my seasoning on top, covered it and put it on high and then set a timer for four hours. I love a good slow cooker recipe because all you gotta do is go about your business for the rest of the day. I ended up drinking a lot of ice water while I edited until the soup was ready. There's about 46 minutes left until our soup is ready. I'm gonna go check on it and maybe have a quick snack because I can't wait that long. I can smell it from here. Ooh, look at it. I'm just gonna see if the veg is done. I don't think it is, but yeah, it's still hard, but that's okay. Not hard, but like not soft just yet. Not perfectly blendable. I'll just move it around a little bit. Oh, it's so full. <laughs> Pop the lid back on and wait until it's done. Meanwhile, I'm gonna have a quick snack. Our neighbor actually gave us some fresh fruit, so I'm gonna have a couple um, plums and nectarines. Gonna have a few of those after I wash them. They're like fresh, right? Like right off the tree basically? Yeah. All right, it is much later. The timer has gone off, plus a couple minutes, because I was busy. <laughs> but let's see. I mean, really, the carrot just needs to be cooked. I think that was like the hardest thing the last time I checked it. Yeah, okay. I mean, should I have cut these a little bit smaller? Maybe. I'm just gonna leave it another 10 to 15 minutes. The bigger carrot chunks are just not the softest. Everything else is quite soft. I just want to make sure that it's in the best condition to blend. Once it was all ready and cooked, I blended it with my hand blender and added some coconut milk. The creamier, the better. I love when it's thick. I used a blender just to blend it up a bit to get all the like coconut water and coconut fats mixed together and then added it to the soup to give it this beautiful creamy texture. And if you do vegetable broth, this soup is entirely vegan, which is awesome. I had some chives on hand, so I cut some into the soup as a little garnish. You can also add pumpkin seeds. I just didn't want to purchase any today. <laughs> and that's it. 
I also added a bit of Greek yogurt just for an extra creamy protein addition. And that was it for dinner. Just a few hours later, we watched some Game of Thrones and made some tea to go along with it. I love this country peach passion tea by Celestial. Anthony had a sleepy time and we sweetened it with a bit of honey. For our pre-bed snack, I love having prunes. It's like a thing of mine for the past few months. You'll know if you watched my Florida night routine, that's been consistent. And I was feeling a little extra hungry, so I had some cereal. These are just Honey Nut Cheerios. I really like the whole grain ones because they're a bit less sweet, but we ran out of those and just have the regular ones. But that's it for what I eat in a day. I hope you enjoyed this autumn cook with me and got some inspiration from these cozy meal ideas for fall. If you want that slow cooker recipe that I've kind of adapted, I will be leaving everything in the description. If you did like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.